Now, I saw a post the other day that said the last video game you played is the video game you're now trapped in. And that, for me, very unsurprisingly, it was RimWorld. Of course, it was RimWorld. And that really got me thinking that, my god, RimWorld would just be awful to be trapped in. And not because of the murderous empire, murderous tribal nations, murderous outlanders. No, you see, it's, it's a bit more obvious than that, isn't it? What will make me dread living in RimWorld? It's the players. It's the, it's the players. With their anime wives, their anime creatures, their anime texture packs. And then it occurred to me that the Empire, the poor, sweet Empire. The Empire are one of the few constants in every single person's game. And my god, they've probably seen some shit. But then I thought, what if we played the Empire and the rest of the planet were the players? What if we were the faction beset by the horrible, overpowered anime waifus? What if we were the ones forced to deal with the single, hyper-powerful super soldier? What if the AI had all that crazy, modded, overpowered stuff, but we were stuck with your regular, plain old, basic, RimWorld ish gear? Welcome to the RimWorld experience you never knew you wanted and probably still don't. The Empire experience, where we effectively play NPCs. Now before I dive in here and introduce our characters, there are a few house rules that we have to address. Things that will allow us to play as NPCs just a little bit better. Now I think it's fairly safe to say that the base game NPC factions have a few weaknesses. They're pretty terrible at noticing people on their borders. So to that extent, we have Fog of War. And where the AI factions turn up with modded weapons and armor, we are not going to have that. I'm going to try and limit our troops to using only the Empire loadouts, the Empire troop types. All of which you can see on the wiki if you're interested. But NPC factions do have a few benefits, right? Like, for example, a pear rabbit. <laughs> They do have a few advantages massively compared to the player. Number one, they effectively have infinite troops. They can raid you as many times as they like and don't have to worry about silly things like recruitment. So to that extent, we do have Rimdeed, a slightly tweaked version of Rimdeed where things are a little more expensive because I think it's a little, a little overpowered, to be honest with you. And if there is one thing the Empire is very good at, that is Psy powers, bestowing psychic powers on people. And to that extent, we have craftable neuroformers. Fortunately, we can't do a full bestowing ceremony like the Empire can. And on the subject of side powers, we do get the ability to choose what side powers we get. There are no new side powers, they're all the vanilla side powers, but we do at least get a little bit of control over it. And then, of course, in most games as well, the AO will have multiple bases. So to that extent, we've got vanilla outposts expanded so that we can spread out into the world a little bit, buy some of those rim deed troops, or maybe if we're very brave, try and capture some of the anime characters to throw off in a mining camp. And I've got a few other rules as well, but I'll put those in the description so you can read through in your own time. I think that's enough bureaucracy. For our idea legend, we have the memes of supremacist, psychic focus, Bushido, and Bulwark because we are the Empire. A little bit of psychic, a little bit of combat, but we are meant to be the elite Empire troops, the red cataphracts. So a heavy focus on combat, and here is the rest of it if you would like to slow it down and read it. That's on you. I'm not going through it all. There's a lot of stuff here. Here's the planet, and here are the factions too if you're curious. Allies with the Empire, because I mean, of course I know him. He's me. But everybody else hates us. These are all custom factions, by the way. The generic player faction, our enemy there, they are going to have suitably Steam Workshop levels of <laughs> raiders. And of course, some recreations of the Empire's biggest enemies, not the real enemies themselves. But you're probably wondering, who are these dashing people that get to lead our colony who have been appointed by the Emperor to lead this glorious charge against these horrible Steam Workshop abominations. Well, of course, it's everyone's favorite Imperial bestower, Slush Creamer. And yes, Slush Creamer's gear, skills, traits are all based exactly on a bestower that could potentially spawn in the regular game. We also have Flavius Deuteronomy, a Stellic Defender style character, with again all of the gear and bionics that you will find on every Stellic Defender in Base Game Reward. And then finally we have Maxima Grigna's daughter, a Stellic Warden, the melee based cataphract that always comes with a bestower in the base game, with again those same Stellic bionics and gear. And for our storyteller, I couldn't think of any more appropriate than Winston Waves. But this time we have a heavily tweaked Winston Waves, but we don't know the wave reward, we don't know the wave modifiers. And then coupled with Winston Waves, we have compressed raiders. But we have compressed raiders all the way down to two. Because I thought, how frequent is it that players will just buff up a couple of people ridiculously with crazy bionics and armor? Not me. I've never done that. Oh, and it is probably worth mentioning because we are part of the Empire and in the base game, Stellic Wardens and Defenders are by default Knights or Dames. Both Flavius and uh, Maxima have their Knight slash Dame title. And then Slush is a Duke. But that's the only non-Empire thing I'm doing. I'm building a nice base. Well, 
I mean, a potentially nice base. We might just get murdered before then. Okay, fine, you caught me. It's a shed in a field. Now, as we are a military this time around, a tight military number with military minds and military people, we can have a barracks. We can have relatively bad food. I absolutely cannot wait for you to see some of the raiders. I designed every single raider for these factions individually. My god, it took a long time. It took a very long time. If you're wondering why this episode's late, that's why. <laughs> every single gun, every single anime outfit and haircut. I suppose maybe we should explore the map given we've got fog of war. Slosh, it's time to go walking, my friend. Let's go see what we've got out here. Oh, well, that is definitely something unique. We have the absolutely fantastic biomes transitions mod that makes it so that biomes, depending on where you start, will blend into one another. In this case, because we're on two different sides of the ocean, our starting map here has ocean, funnily enough, on two different sides of it. Now, I haven't played with the Fog of War mod in a very, very long time. If I remember correctly, I inspected chicken. Of course, that's exactly what I was about to say. Okay, we've got security bells that reveal enemies when they step on it. We can build watchtowers that increase colonists' vision when they stand on it. Or we can build chickens that we feed rice and they clock when there's an enemy nearby. That is... That is a work of art. Oh, good God. Because they've got bionic eyes, when they fall asleep, the irises around their eyes close. That's horrible. On the subject of our very frightening lovable characters, I've included a lot of social mods this time around. A lot of, a lot of things that deepen the social experience, the interaction. They've all got very distinct personalities as well. And the reason for this is very simple. We are going to get massacred. We are going to get absolutely massacred. Our poor little Imperial conscripts are going to get butchered just as they would with any player fighting the Empire normally. I want you to love these characters. I want you to become attached to them. I want you to cry when they're cut down in the field of battle by a cybernetic katana-wielding furry. But I want you to cheer. I want you to cheer when we, generic NPC faction, defeat the player invaders. Now, being the Empire, of course, we have everything we need to get an operational base capable of crafting its own gear. We have machining, we have batteries, we have solar panels, we have fabrication but there are still quite a lot of luxuries that we would like to get and that's where our research will eventually come in research is kind of optional this time around we already have the research to craft the gear but if we want to do it a lot more effectively if we want to add a few luxuries where we can afford it here and there we're still running a military organization here i mean come on now but if we want our officers to get some better meals because at the end of the day they are the empire they are going to complain if they don't have their harpsichords and other garbage luxuries. Why, yes, I did build the whole base out of wood. Thank you for noticing. Well, let's just pray that those two incoming on Palumpas don't notice. Now, I think we can all agree that it's about time I actually used some sort of psychic powers in this game. The base game psychasts? I'm not a big fan. I'm gonna be honest. The problem is, I need to be a fan. <laughs> if we're gonna survive, we need to be a fan here. We do get to choose our psychast, so that's something. Slush is okay at combat, but because he's the bestower, he can only use the Altec staff and the, and, and the basic robes that he has. So he's probably not best to pull on the front line. I think, let's use you as a buff character. We could use, say, Pain Block or Maxima Getter in there. Let's go... Blinding Pulse? And then... Uh, Beckon could be good. We pull them in close and she hacks them apart. And then let's go for... I mean, Wall Rays would be massive. Smoke Pop? Oh man, Smoke Pop's too good. And then let's go... I, I mean, Berserk to drive one of them insane is really nice. Let's go Berserk. And we'll just turn Slush into a proper backup character. And then, I mean, look, you can't do anything else besides Wardening. And I'll be honest, it's going to be really difficult to recruit these people. So I think we just put you on almost like permanent... What do you think, like permanent meditate schedule? Let's do like a few hours of meditation. Because that's probably going to keep us alive a lot more than this guy <laughs> helping out with the rice. Well, I mean, there's only one choice for this, right? Whoa, I had no idea this was a thing. The Empire's home planet has a canon name. An Ultratech refugee society from the planet Sophia Munda. There you go. We'll name it in honor of the Empire's home planet. Nice. Given that we're being really strict with faction uniforms this time around, let's be very, very careful about making sure we've got enough cloth. Otherwise, our people are going to be naked. And given that I think we have some, um, questionable body mods this time around, I'd like to avoid that if possible. <laughs> Can't blame me, okay? I chose all the popular player faction mods. That's on the Steam Workshop. That's on you watching. Okay, here we go. Our first raid. Can't imagine. Oh, well, they're somewhere in the fog of war. Can't imagine it's going to be too difficult, right? It's the first raid. They're not going to be compressed down that much. It's probably nothing to worry about. Hello? No, oh, I hate it already. 
Now, this isn't so bad now, right? Because it's just going to be two regular people. But you imagine this fog of war when we've got some cybernetic anime woman chasing us down at 5,000% move speed. Oh, there they are. <laughs> really, really takes you back, huh? Uh, please don't let them burn the base down. Drive them berserk. A, a display of our power. Oh, my God. They've just punched them. If that ends up burning the base down, I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> Ooh. Our random reward was a research boost from the Emperor himself. Nano machine industry. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, you might be thinking, you can recruit purple. But of course, we're the base game empire. The base game empire doesn't have aliens. No base game faction has aliens. We could. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could enslave them. That's allowed, right? Slavery is honorable. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess we could. I guess we could do that. That does seem very on brand for the empire as well. They, they strike me as the type that would be, uh, that would be into that. And that way, hear me out here. We can have the soldiers doing the actual soldiering. And then we can have... Whatever we capture from these raids, doing all the cooking and, uh, and the crafting, ideally. We, we're going to lose a lot of people. We're going to lose a lot of people. And the sad part is a lot of the Empire classes all have death acidifiers, fires. So we're also going to need to craft a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, look at this. We've got a Therma bath. A very large heated stone bath meant to be shared by several patrons. Wow, don't tell them that. And then a theater stage, which of course is both from Vanilla Faction's Expanded Classical, given that the Empire is... You know, very heavily classically inspired. We built a lovely bath for all of our troops to... Well, I mean, not bathing, because I don't have any usable materials yet. I'm already scared for the next raid. We have uh, two waifu villagers from generic player faction. I think we'll build enough basic structures just to get everything we need for a base going. And then we'll stick a giant wall around it. Maybe like a palisade or something basic just until we get more people. Um, What do we have unlocked at this point? Barbed wire? Barricades? Okay, this, this'll work. And then as soon as we get some rice, we can build some inspector chickens. How much rice do you think they eat? I suppose a better question is, should we should we plant more rice? You know, I'm gonna do that. We've got a lot of chickens to feed, potentially. Only one hour before they turn up, I didn't even have a chance to build a chicken. Wait, is that how far the chicken can see? Or is it even worth building a friggin' chicken at that point? You know what? I've gotta do it. <laughs> I've gotta do it just to see what it looks like. That is, uh, that is Surely a chicken. I can't argue with that. And somewhere out there in the dark fog is generic player faction with its two waifu villagers. Oh, God. Flavius, bring the charge rifle. Oh, no. Oh, they've got tails. Oh, they've got tails and they're barely dressed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. Flavius, I smell heresy. This does not belong in the Empire. Man, they seem fairly tanky, though, huh? They can take a few hits, my god. Uh, Slush and Maxima, if you could deal with the other one here. If we could just, like, uh, if you could visit my, visit my friend Maxima, that'd be very handy. Did that... That don't, that don't do anything? Oh! Oh! Oh, I was thinking of Skip. Well, it goes to show off when I use the base game side powers. <laughs> it will, I got shot in the whip cage for the Emperor! For the Emperor, brothers, we have done it! Oh, what are you sending me this time? Fuel! Are you just start, like, dropping a bunch of chem fuel all over my wooden base? I don't, I'm not sure I appreciate that. We've done a great thing. I, or, I already... No, no, what is this? <laughs> What's going on here? Oh my god, she got back up and I was about to... About to finish her off. Maxima. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, shit, I didn't hear it with the first one. Wow, that almost killed me. My god. Can we dig a mass grave for the anime cat girls? They do not deserve a funeral. We don't have mass graves. Oh, I'll see about that. But yes, that does look like a mass grave to me as well. We are restoring balance to RimWorld one cat girl corpse at a time. All for the glory of the Emperor and his mighty honor guard. Oh, no. Slush and Maxima want to sleep together. Consider assigning them a double bed. Well, with a name like Slush Creamer, Slush Maxima, I mean, that would be a fantastic name for their child. There, there are no childhood mechanics in that. Uh, there seems to be a, a... Hold on a second, let me just check. Okay, yeah, it turns out the cat girls are um very naked. Very naked. Do you know, like, real more characters when they're naked, they're just like a Barbie doll? The cat girls aren't. <laughs> <laughs> was a little bit suspicious of the uh, of the dependency that mod needed. Some sort of 
body type mod with a bunch of anime in the picture. I should have I should have figured it out. Okay, critical for all cat girls, but no colony members. They will gain themselves a tomb. A tomb for their honor and sacrifice in the name of the Emperor. Neron and Oompa Loompa side by side in death. Wow. Do you think we could crack that ancient danger? I mean, it's obviously an ancient danger, right? I bet we could do it. We've got two prestige cataphracts with a charge blaster and a very fancy mono sword. Is it a persona mono sword? It is. I don't know what the persona is, though. Handsome. Oh, hello. Kind thoughts, psychic sensitizer. That's actually pretty good. Gives them a mood bonus, and then they also get 20% psychic sensitivity. Not so good when we get horrible psychic screams. Wow. Who could have guessed it was an ancient danger? <laughs> Guess we'll let uh, Maxima crack it open. Empty? Oh my god, it's actually empty. What the hell? Oh, and if these are full of ancients, ancient super soldiers, potentially, that would work for the Emperor? I mean, I think we just slap a door on it, we call it a prison. And then we also got a Psychic Terra Pulse and a Bionic Leg. Now, with Bionics, there are many modded Bionics, because of course, it wouldn't be a RimWorld uh, player mod pack if it didn't include every unbalanced bionic on the workshop, which is basically all of them. However, we're not allowed to use any of them. We have to stick to those base game or royalty bionic. Drill arms are allowed, but uh, nano machine sun definitely aren't. Incidentally, the enemies will have access to nano machine sun. I specifically made one of them have <laughs> nano machine sun. I don't expect this from every series, okay? I'm not designing every single potential enemy unit next series. There's a reason this one is two days late. Next up, we have Bucko's Pirates, two drifters, one scavenger thrasher. Now, Slush, that's a Slush Creamy, of course. Bestowa, Bestowa Creamer, to give him his uh, full name. He has heard rumors that perhaps if we kill enough people from one particular faction, who knows? Maybe the faction leaders themselves or high-ranking faction members may turn up. Uh, now, as a reminder, this is, of course, all training. These aren't actually the real faction members. Anne herself won't turn up, but maybe somebody dressed like Anne with Anne's powers might turn up. An imposter, if you will. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Oh, good news. Cringe's chocolate factory and the Patreons are no longer at war. <laughs> What's happening? What if they start to ally against us? Ooh, I didn't think about that one. I didn't think about that. We do have factional war in this mod pack, so um, that could be a problem. They wouldn't. They wouldn't, they wouldn't ally against us. That would be, that would be foolish. And it would also probably end the series. And I suppose I probably should choose a permit, shouldn't I? I was going to save it just to call in troops in a big emergency. But given at least for the next few waves, we're going to be fine. It'll start compressing at six or more people. And that's when things will get kind of exponentially tough. But for the time being, we're probably all right just to call in like a steel drop or something. Um... Steel drop probably wouldn't hurt. I mean, a labor team would be fantastic right now, huh? You know what? Give me the give me the components. Give me the steel. Let's take the laborers. Uh, maybe a little silver. That couldn't hurt. I think we might need. You know what? I think we might need this actually. Let's call them nodes instead. And we'll probably do the same again. Components, steel, silver. That way we could potentially use it all to build a hospital, right? Then we'll go troopers, uh, aero drone, and laborers again. And then with Slush, Slush has got access to some of the higher powers. Advanced components, the assassins. Obviously, I've got to try it. That sounds incredible. Janissaries, cataphracts, glitter med, troopers, and then, like, food? We haven't taken food. Uh, and then let's go components. I don't think we need extra laborers on top of that. Right. Um, yeah, Maximo keeps smashing. Flavius, let's go ahead and call in some laborers. Hello, mighty servants of the Emperor. You are here to serve the Emperor's elite squad. Welcome, Valens, Verinia, Calderon, and Salvius. Because, of course, these people count as royalty, you know? These, these are these are knights and dames, and we've got ourselves a duke here. They don't really like working. They do if they're forced to. They're not happy about it, though. Did dumb labor, minus two. They want slaves. They want a throne room. And they want art. Is any of those people who turn up a good artist? <gasps> we got one! That's massive. That's maybe the best thing that could have happened. Oh, look at the farming, though. Oh, this is huge. Um, we've got anyone good at crafting. You are, so let's put you on that. Not that it's super relevant right now. Plant cutting is great. We could set them to go mine. They're actually pretty good at that. Well, I suppose we'll use the resources to start building. Uh, let's go components, please. Let's go uh, steel, if you can. And maybe some silver, too, would be nice. 
gifts from the Emperor to help build his mighty squad. But I'll be honest, I won't bother calling in any Libras yet, because we don't need them, and our entire base might be burned down, and we might need them in a hurry. So I think that's probably a good idea. We might not need them at all in the long term when we get other people, so it's kind of a gamble taking that one. Might have wasted it. We might as well use these powers when they're off of cooldown, huh? Uh, let's go for the advantage. Why am I dropping over there and not, like, right next to the stockpile? We're gonna make them extra work. Work for the Emperor. He respects it. Get some glissomed, some silver. Uh, the food probably couldn't hurt as well. We'll throw that a bit closer to the... <laughs> actual living area. Assassins, Cataphracts, Royal Beam, Aerodrone, Trooper Squad. And if you're thinking, boy, you've got a lot of powers, boy, you've got a lot, go a lot going on there. You got a lot of, you got a lot of strings to your bow. Trust me, we're gonna get wiped out, and I mean that sincerely. If you think 250 steel every week is gonna make a difference, well, I've got some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> like, really bad news. I mean, with this many of the Emperor's laborers, we certainly don't need electric stone cutting table. You there, stone cut for the Emperor. The Emperor doesn't want this base to burn down. He told me himself. We're, we're good friends. I'd met him in the corridor on the way here. You wouldn't know. He lives in Canada. Oh, yar! Bucko's pirates. Why didn't they come via the ocean? They don't seem like very good pirates. Uh, pathetic laborers, you may hide. The Emperor will protect you. Oh, Lord. Hello? Well, that's quite a few, isn't it? You've got a hook for a hand, a cutlass, an axe, a pirate axe. Wow, you are unstoppable, aren't you? Uh, Slush, what can you do here? What can you do here, my friend? Uh, you could blind them. That'd be quite good. Bink. Did that help? Not really, because they're a melee character. We just did it for fun. Please leave. You are getting a fuel drop. Oh, thank you. Emperor Jilt, just thought we really didn't need any more of chem fuel. Piled up in my wooden base. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna stash that in a mountain, I think. Let's mine this out. Kill two birds with one stone. Oh, the Emperor and his benevolence has sent us a trader. I don't even know what I want at this point. Um, I guess we'll send Slush Creamer up there to go and have a look. Greetings. It is Slush Creamer. What the The more I look at this, the worse things get. What the hell is going on here? And the Emperor's lost his damn mind. I'll presume that they are um diplomats in that caravan. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at all these things I can't use. I'll take shirt, vest, and robe might be an interesting combo. The bestower has to wear a very specific set of gear that... What was, what was that? What's going on there? Ooh! Slush understands how to deal with the representatives of this faction. He receives the following bonuses. 10% better prices and 20% reputation gain from gifts. I mean, they are... I mean, it's our faction. I will be the first person to admit... I don't think I've ever used a reinforced barrel. <laughs> In real world. <laughs> 5,000 hours, by the way. So we could buy a couple of those if we can afford it. We absolutely can. Well, that's silver from the Emperor. is going right back. It's a cyclical economy. Cyc cyclical? That's not a real word. It's a whole new word. An imperial word. Well, the shuttle's here. Man, I thought we'd have more time than that. To be fair, we made almost 2,000 limestone bricks out of that and another 820 granite. So I'm, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty all right. Thank you. Goodbye, laborers. You have served us well. So this building down here is for the inevitable uh, volunteer labor force that we capture, that I'm at least hoping to capture. But we'll have a kind of storage slash crafting room there. What we need is some sort of big imperial palace at this point, right? Our, our bestower and our, our wardens are going to need it as well. Our stalic, stalic defender and stalic warden. Let's get the regular base fireproof first, and then I'll worry about building a fancy palace afterwards. Now, I would hate to see this all horribly burned down by... You know, like an angry Oompa Loompa or a freaking cat girl. Well, it would appear in less than one hour they are sending more waifus. And you send your waifus. You send them. Random player, I am demonizing my head for playing the game how you would like to play it. I have a lovely new home for your waifus. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like before long we're probably going to need more mass graves. I was going to fill up pretty fast. Well, I suppose not with Compressor Aider. They're just going to get ridiculously powerful really fast. Okay, squad, maybe... Oh, Slush, why are you all the way out there? Luckily, they came in through the other side. I really could do with some towers. Like some towers, maybe? That'd be good. Hello? The waifus, be careful, Maxima. They're not compressed yet, but... Oh! What are we looking at? Oh, what the hell is even that? I mean, I know what they are. Yeah, I designed them. Yeah, Queen Mab. Padre, you're just called Padre. And then there's a fucking Pikachu or something. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Oh, you know what? Stay behind that tree. It's probably better for my monetization that way. Man, they've got some powerful gear for this level of the game, huh? Kill, kill that, kill that dragon. Oh god, get behind some cover. You know what? You could, you could just like rush them down. Let's send you down to like here. See if they'll come round. Oh, they're just gonna head straight for us. Right, go, slay, slush. Slush is out of the game for a long time. 
Get him. Maxima. Nice. Okay. How are we looking over here? Flavius is in a little bit of trouble. He's being whacked by sexy, sexy Pikachu. Oh, Maxima, we're going to need to back up here. Holy crap. Um, right, Slosh. Just stay there. Blast him. Blast him right now. We could pain block. I mean, blinding pulse isn't going to work super well. But we could hit you with it. And shut you down for a while. Gives us time to deal with sexy Pikachu. And then we hide behind the corner. Well, you can die. <laughs> and then we hide behind the corner and you disappear. Oh, come on. Hello? Oh, I've lost them. Oh, they're right there. Uh, Maxima? Maxima, like, hit them, though. Okay. We got medicine. We got medicine. That's good. Because, I mean, Flavius, despite the fact that he's a stalic defender with the stone skin gland and some... You know, like, arguably the most powerful armor in the game. Getting his ass handed to him a little bit there. 52% health. This is, this is way... That was way four. It was way four. Bucko's about to send in two poorly thought out grenadiers and one smoke grenadier. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Hospital. Definitely far more important. I'll be honest, I didn't think we'd need one yet. But definitely far more important than building a giant throne room. Though that is also really, really important. Could really do with one of those meditation thrones. We need some recruits. Because this is a monstrous idea. We need more characters capable of using... <laughs> using ranged weapons. Maximus gear locked to just using bloody melee weapons. God damn you, base game reward design. God damn you. Well, tomorrow there's nothing left for us but to crack open a cold one with the boys. On behalf of the Emperor, of course, who'd be very pleased to receive his new recruits. Because our current recruits are... <laughs> Getting absolutely battered. Scantily clad dragon women beating the ever-loving shit out of our stellic defenders. Come on. I certainly hope you enjoy the idea of this series, because it's very weird. I think it could be a lot of fun when we actually get a lot of troops together. A proper little army here, all with gear and, and design decided by the base game itself. And I hate to say it, but this is going to force me to use strategies I wouldn't already use. I think I've genuinely cast more psychic powers in, in this one episode than I have in the past six months. <laughs> and we get permits. And we get some actual royalty stuff. I never used the royalty mechanic, so I quite like this. I would highly recommend you download the pack and, and take a look for yourself. Play along. There's been so much polish put into this one, more than more than a lot of the other series I do. Every last detail, every every faction, every ideology, and every enemy has been carefully handcrafted. The planet itself, even. Because if you were to download this mod pack and just dive in with your own scenario, my god, it would be a mess. It would be just a completely different experience. So take a look. Tell me what you think. And consider it a challenge. If you want a real challenge, uh, don't even compress it down to like six people with raid compressor. Put it down to like one. Because then you get the real super soldier experience. Let me tell you, that's impossible. I tested it earlier. I got up to like wave nine and someone turned up with 1100% moving speed. 1100% moving speed. Not easy. And as Slush Creamer carries the body of a... Oh my god. <laughs> I think we've annoyed the workshop gods. And a slush creamer carries the bruised gunshot body of a tiny little dragon girl. I say thank you for watching. Join me tomorrow, don't you, for G probably getting destroyed. Oh, hello there. It's me from the future. I definitely wasn't uploading this video and then forgot I didn't even do a Patreon hour card. Thank you for bearing with me. The lists have been updated at long last. It's taken a little time because I haven't had my usual Patreon helper with me, but things are finally catching up and restoring to the way they should be. Thank you for bearing with me again. Uh, a new post coming on Patreon later and all that good stuff because, you know, Generations 2 anyway. This is very unprofessional uh, compared to how I normally do it, but I'm having to record this on the fly very quickly at the last minute. Thank you to Z117, Falcon Alaris, Hoopy, Bellman, Retal, Average Nobody, Avion, Athon, El Scorcio, H2, Choppy to Bear, Doctor. To Bubba, Glob Glob, Accidents King, Huntsman, Mad Mile, Sharksy, and Zoe Meadows for their support. The executive producer is over on Patreon. Thank you for bearing with me, and a thank you as well to I see the Great Duke, Irish Batman, Mayor, Magister, Militant, Metman, Jimmy Bailey, Shatulski, Kestrian, Thura, Ink, and Cyber Monkey as well. I'll have a more professional end card tomorrow <laughs> rather than just a JPEG. <laughs>